Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Monday morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you guys. Good to see you this morning. Good to be with you this morning. Getting the week off to a great start. Motivation Monday. High energy. Let's go. High energy. We got the coffee going. Got the caffeine IV in. Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts. McDonald's. Carolina Beach. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day. We had storms through the Chicago area last night. But today is beautiful. Beautiful. Temperatures have dropped a little bit. More importantly, some of that humidity is out of here. You guys on the East Coast, we're sending you our humidity. (laughs) You get to enjoy it for a couple of days. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release a heart. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good morning. Am I the rabbi? Good morning. Good morning. Are you covered with the dust of the rabbi? Good morning, Chicago Heights. We got some regular copy going in Chicago Heights. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Did y'all have a good weekend? Had a good weekend. Things were well. All right. The humidity is high. Where are you? Are you on the East Coast? You're in the eastern part of the country. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, that humidity was something else the last couple of days in Chicago. Got the oatmeal going? All right. We had some good things happening over the weekend. Um, here at Cornerstone, we hosted Cassandra Scott Ministries. Uh, she has a, uh, a prayer line that she does every day, and it's one of the, the larger prayer lines in the nation. Uh, she has a lot of people on her prayer line, and, and uh, they do regional meetings, regional conferences around the country, and we uh, were able to host them here at Cornerstone Friday and Saturday. I was not able to be present, but I heard great things about the conference. I heard it was a great, great time. So that's wonderful. And then uh, Saturday afternoon and evening was the TRT production of Flora and Family. I went to the 3 o'clock show, and it was very, very good. Had a great cast. We had a few of our Cornerstone people involved with the production. And everybody did a great job. Tanya Townsend does just uh, amazing as a writer and director. I, I don't know how people do stuff like that. I don't know how she does it, how you write a script like that and put all those different parts in and have people speaking to each other in conversations and interrupting each other and the timing so good. I, I, I don't know how that happens, but it was very good. It was very good. And I uh, understand the 7 o'clock show was just absolutely sold out, packed and jammed with people. So TRT Productions is on the rise, so we're glad about that. That's exciting. Amen. I hope your church was good yesterday. Did you have a good experience in your worship services yesterday? Was it, was it okay? Uh, here at Cornerstone, I was ministering on the subject of shalom, the power of shalom. I spoke about shalom here on Leaderscope at the end of last week and um, uh, shared with you some things about shalom from the scripture. And I believe it's something that our nation needs, our culture needs right now with all of this uh, rach- racial hostility rising up once again. We need the shalom of God. And so uh, my message yesterday will be on the podcast here within a day or two. Uh, so you can check it out if you would like. GregHouse.com. H-O-W-S-E. GregHouse.com. Go there and you can subscribe to the podcast and listen on iTunes. You can also get our Cornerstone app and the podcast is there as well. So I hope that you'll check that out. Um, Today I want to spend a few minutes with you talking about some leadership fundamentals. And uh, of course there are many, many leadership fundamentals. And today I want to cover just three of those, three really important leadership fundamentals. There is a motivational speaker named Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. And Jim Rohn says that success is neither magical nor mysterious. Success is the natural consequence of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. The natural consequence of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. 
Paul the Apostle said it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. In other words, we want to win. Everyone who competes in the games does so with strict training. We're coming up on the Olympic Games in Rio here pretty quick. And, and Paul is talking about those Olympic Games, the athletic games. And he says if you're competing in the games, you go into it with strict training. With strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. I like that one. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. And I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. That's 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, out of the New International Version. Check out verse 27 one more time. I strike a blow to my body. In other words, self-discipline. I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So these three leadership fundamentals are uh, really, really important. And so let me just give them to you quickly here, and then we'll go on with the day. Number one is self-leadership, or you might call it self-government. Self-leadership or self-government. In self-leadership, as you attempt to lead yourself, you, you have to go through a maintenance routine, somewhat like you do with your automobile. You know, they tell us, like, get our oil change every 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, whatever it is. Every several thousand miles, we're supposed to get the oil changed in our cars. And, and so we go about doing that because it's regular maintenance on the car. And that's exactly what needs to happen in our lives as well as we practice self-government. So that means that we need to maintain our thought system, how we're thinking. We need to maintain our belief system because our thoughts are going to lead us into certain beliefs. So maintain your belief system. Out of your beliefs will come your values. So you must learn how to maintain your value system, what you count as important in life, what you live for, what you would die for your value system, and then out of your value system, your belief system, and your thought system, your speech system will come. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your speech system is coming out of your thoughts, your beliefs, and your values. So we must learn how to maintain our speech system. And remember, James in the Bible tells us if, if we can govern our speech, then we'll have a pretty good handle on things. Yeah. And then from your speech system comes your behavior system. Because what you keep talking about will be what you eventually do. It's going to be manifested in your behavior. So if you can get a handle on these aspects of your life and maintain them, run these aspects of life through a regular maintenance routine, it's going to help you in your leadership fundamentals. Fundamentally, you, you need to be able to establish patterns in your life. That's part of self-leadership. The ability to establish patterns and then to live with consistent, consistency. To live with consistency. So just simple things like, uh, I've, I've, I know this, this gets repetitive, but the time you get up in the morning, that is a pattern that you set. So you can choose to sleep in until 11 or 12 if you like, and that becomes a pattern. But I want to suggest to you that that's a negative pattern unless you're working until 3 or 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and you need those hours of sleep. But for the normal person working regular hours and you're going to bed at 10, 11, or 12, whatever, you need to develop a pattern of getting up early in the morning. Get that pattern moving in your life and then be consistent with it. Another pattern that needs to be established is consistent, a, a consistent eating routine where we are consistent with our meals. If you're consistent with your eating, it's going to help your metabolism. You'll, you'll more easily burn calories. You will uh, uh, be uh, more on track. You'll have a, a higher energy level. 
because you are being consistent and patterned in your meals, in your eating. So those are just a couple of things that you might consider. And all of this is about self-leadership. Self-leadership. And, and along with self-government, you also need to be able to set the atmosphere for your day. Don't allow other people to establish your atmosphere. You are the one that sets the atmosphere for your day. So as you start the day, before anything happens during the day, before you run into any difficult people, before any problems arise, practice getting up in the morning and intentionally, deliberately setting the atmosphere for your day. There are some who use the book of Job and say that we are to command the morning. All right, if that works for you, then let's do it. Let's command the morning. That means set the atmosphere. Set an atmosphere of peace in your life so that no matter what happens during the day, no matter how much somebody comes to offend you or to wound you or to hurt your feelings or to, to get you into a place of panic or chaos, you're not going to allow it to happen because you have already set your atmosphere. So let's work on that together. That's self-leadership. The second leadership fundamental is influence. Influence. Here's, here's a real truth you need to get a hold of. The person who has influence has true power, whether they have a title or not. Did y'all hear that? The person who has influence has true power, whether they have a title or not. If you're part of a local church, you can walk into that local church and you can rather quickly determine who the leaders are, even if they don't have a title. Because the leaders will be the ones that are carrying influence. They are the ones influencing other people. They may not have a title, they may not have an office, they may not have their name on a door, but if they have influence, they have power. And that power is going to be an aspect of leadership that they can use to push that local church in one direction or another. And if they have influence, and people with titles don't have influence, they're going to be able to lead people to a greater degree than the people that have the titles. Influence is critical. People desire leaders who model or display a positive influence. That's what people want. If you're a leader, people are looking to you to display a positive influence. Not a negative, but a positive. And, and, and so we need to develop this aspect of influence in our lives. Uh, Brian Tracy says, become the kind of leader that people would follow voluntarily, even if you had no title or position. Did you hear that? That's influence. Let me say it again. Become the kind of leader that people would follow voluntarily, even if you had no title or position. That is called influence. John Maxwell says that leadership is influence. Influence. Very important. So we have self-leadership. Number two, we have influence. The third one is relationships. That's another fundamental of leadership. You must be effective and healthy in your relationships. Stanley Allen says the most useful person in the world today is the man or woman who knows how to get along with other people. Human relations is the most important science in living. Let me say that one more time. That's crucial. The most useful person in the world today is the man or woman who knows how to get along with other people. Human relations is the most important science in living. Did you hear that? The ability to get along with people. If you are a leader, you must have this relationship aspect of your life at a high level. Leaders are in the people development business. That's what we do. We work with people. We're developing people. We're patient with people. We're kind. We're gentle. We're compassionate with people. Sometimes we have to point out people's mistakes or point out people's faults in order to help them. The, the goal there is, all, the motive is always to help, is always to equip, is always to, to empower, 
is always to raise them to a higher place. And so relational ability is essential for leadership success. Now, this is becoming more and more vital for us in our culture because so many people are coming out of broken home experiences. We're, we're in this generation now where we are reaping what was sown back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s with divorces, breaking of covenant, people not being willing to stay with family. And when you have those, those separations in family relationships, especially as a child, it establishes a certain way of thought, a certain way of responding in your life. And without those fundamental family relationships, we lose out on learning how to relate with people. That's, that's the essential part of family. We learn how to relate with other people. Those initial lessons in relationships are established in the family environment. We learn how to solve problems. We learn how to forgive. We learn how to be reconciled. All of that happens in the context of family. So if our families are dysfunctional, if our families are, are really messed up and we never picked up on those relational talents, those relational um, practices, I should say, then we're not going to be able to be effective in relationships where our leadership is concerned. And that is going to damage us. It's going to hinder us. Because as a leader, you must have relational ability. That is essential for your success. So as you look at your relationships with the people that you are leading, are, are you attracting people? Are you pulling them in to your team? Are you able to keep people on your team? Or do you see that you are repelling people? That you are pushing them away from your team? Which one is it? And I, so, I know sometimes when we, we feel like we are great leaders, I've had people sit before me and say, hey, I'm a great leader. Well, then what's happening with the people you're leading? Because if people are leaving your team, it could be evidence that there's something lacking in your leadership. And so, you know, instead of looking at ourselves and evaluating ourselves, and measuring ourselves, many times we tend to look at the people that are leaving our teams and we blame them. We say, oh, well, it's them. They, they did this. They did that. They couldn't cope. They, they, they couldn't follow instructions uh, uh, they, they weren't uh, expedient in their responsibilities. They weren't punctual, whatever the case may be. And all of those things are, are really small things that can be worked on. They can be addressed. We can lead people in correcting some of those things in their lives. It's not just a matter of them walking away from our team and then we use different excuses when really the, the finger should be pointed at ourselves. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't know how to relate to people. So that's a, that's a way to evaluate your leadership, to evaluate your ability to relate to other people. Are you pulling people in? Are you attracting people to your team? Are you able to keep people on your team? Or are you pushing people away? Are you repelling them? And you could be repelling them because you're just too critical. It could be because of your perfectionism. I know that's an issue that I have had to deal with in my life. I'm still dealing with it. Your perfectionism will chase people away. Um, it, it could be because you are arrogant. Yeah. You come off as being superior or better than them. And anytime we're, we're taking these negative positions in people's lives, it is evidence that we are not doing well in our relational skills. So we've got to give some attention to that. All right, well, let's wrap this up. I just, I just noticed the time. I, I've been, uh, been talking long enough. <laughs> so we have these three leadership fundamentals. And the three leadership fundamentals for today, the things we're dealing with today, there are many more, but just these three things, self-government, self-leadership. Number two, influence. And number three, relational ability, relationships. Very, very important. Listen, I love you. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for being on Leaderscope with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the hearts. Thank you for inviting people on with you. 
I am grateful. I hope you have a great day today. We are ready for opportunities rising in front of us. Open doors in front of you today. Those doors are swinging wide open. You have favor with God and favor with man. I declare it to you now in the name of Jesus. You're going to prosper today. Scripture says, here's your word for today. Here's what the scripture says. Everything you put your hands on is going to prosper. You believe it? Everything you put your hands on is going to prosper today. Come on. High energy today. Let's go. It's going to be a great Monday. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.